Can I have the first question, please? Okay, Krishnan, you can go first. Uh, good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon, Chenjo. Hello, uh, Krishna. My... Hi, coach. So my question is to you, like, uh, uh, last time around when uh, Diaz was suspended, uh, we went for a, uh, Luna played as a striker, and uh, uh, we went for a different kind of system. Yes, she suspended. So are you looking to uh, uh, put uh, Luna as a second striker, or like you are looking to other options we are looking again for a different type and uh, strike so uh, tomorrow we'll try to explore some other things and we'll try to again uh, have offensive side and uh, then we'll see hoping for the best so we have enough yeah. players whoever is missing whoever is not with us especially due to injuries or uh, suspensions so no problem no problem we have enough players enough players with quality who can uh, who can be there, there on the pitch. So, as a coach, it makes me happy. Okay, so um, uh, adding to that, like uh, um, Rahul was on the bench for last three matches. He didn't came on. Uh, so, how is he? Is he fit enough or can he start or uh, is he fit enough for uh, coming from the bench again? Uh, well, actually, one of those games we bench because uh, we didn't have enough players due to suspension and uh, the injuries so actually we had to put three goalkeepers and Raul also on the bench in order to have 15 players available for uh, for game uh, from the other side uh, looking his uh, uh, improvement uh, of medical staff and improvement in his work last game also was not uh, let's say favorable for uh, for himself after such a long injury to let him come in uh, immediately in that type of intensity so we uh, we won't make stupid things with him because uh, his injury uh, is in a final p uh, part of evaluation where we have to prepare uh, those things also for long term and uh, certainly we won't be so stupid and uh, lose uh, lose any player now with that kind of decision again in the long term so we have to be very careful with that uh, so far, he's uh, looking good. He's uh, get this playing time. We have to be very careful. Okay, coach. Wow. One more update regarding. Uh, can you tell me about Ruiva? Like, uh, has he joined the, the training or is he still in uh, quarantine? Uh, Hormi. Ruiva. Ah, uh, Hormi. Hormi. Yeah. Yes. Hormi joined the training with a nice mask. We liked it so much, and it looks pretty. So, uh, so he joined the training. He's still kind of soft character, but he can come and uh, train with us. So he didn't lose uh, a lot of uh, playing rhythm. Of course, surgery was uh, something unpleasant, but immediately after that, he was uh, working uh, also with uh, with the special program, and uh, he's now with us on on the pitch. So we could expect seeing uh, how he evolves. Seeing him also in the in the last games of the competition. Okay, thank you, coach. Thank you, Jojo. All the best for tomorrow. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. Can we have Ashwati's question, please? Good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon, Jojo. Uh, I'm Ashwati from Half Way Football. I hope uh, both of you are doing well. Can I ask you the player first? Yes. Hi, Jojo. Hi. Um, so you have played for many Indian clubs so far. So how do you, uh, you know, like uh, ex explain your experience with Kerala Blasters so far, comparing to the play uh, teams you played with in, in India? So like uh, this year, I'm, I think I'm I'm playing in India for like uh, for the fifth fifth year, and uh, and I'm very I'm very honored to uh, sign in the Kerala. With a uh, with a huge hand, huge huge fan base, and I'm getting a lot of support from the fans, and I'm very happy to uh, play play from the Kerala Blaster. Thank you, Tenju. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, Hyderabad FC are absolutely crucial.
reacting towards the loan dump and expectations on tomorrow's match? Well, it's uh, it's another match, another game in a row, especially in a, such a short uh, short term competition where uh, the games are just coming on and on. So uh, it's another game, another game on uh, on the schedule that we have to face, another opponent that we have to play against, and that's all. So it's uh, one of the best teams of the league so far. They're first on the table with uh, with the reason. So that's a team uh, working with the consistency, with the with the process. And that's uh, they deserve to be on top of the table for the moment. So we will face them now and again tomorrow uh, for the second time this season. Uh, hoping that we'll play a good game, we'll be concentrating because against one of the best teams of the league, you have to be 95 minutes focused, organized, trying to explore and uh, use uh, their weak points and uh, trying to use our strong points, of course, to, to score goals. So I expect one tough game, physically tough game with uh, lots of runnings, lots of duels. Uh, both teams wanting to win, both teams wanting to uh, the spot in, uh, on the ranking. So you know, a football game with a, with a stake that every player like uh, likes to play. So nothing more than that. Another game going towards the end of the competition. So that's it. Coach, one more question. Uh, since Andy is suspended, can we expect Nishu to start? Is he uh, fit enough? Uh, no, he is not fit enough and he will not be participating in tomorrow's game. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Tenjo. All the best for the game. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwati. Can we have Basil's question, please? Uh, thank you, Rose. Uh, this is Basil from the list. Hi, Coach. Hi, Tenjo. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, let me start with uh, a question. Uh, so, uh, Sipovic came as substitute against uh, Northeast and uh, considered last minute goal. And this exact same thing happened against uh, uh, our last match at ATKMB2. So, do you think uh, substituting Bijoy was a wrong decision or, or, or more like during the dying times of a game? Well, we uh, we had to uh, react in those moments with that substitution because we needed fresh legs, and uh, our young uh, young defender Bijo was suffering with a with a kind of uh, cramps and reactions. So we didn't want to take risk because we need those guys till the end of the competition, and mm -hmm. uh, leaving him maybe till the end uh, in those circumstances would provoke even a worst injury. So and we wanted to avoid that. But that's why we brought fresh legs, and then. Mentioning these details, it happens. It happens that uh, um, maybe if you see like statistics after those kind of things that we were considering goals, but it's nothing, nothing connecting to that. I think that's just the moment that uh, in the last uh, last seconds, I think that uh, Sipo was there in the block. Even if he he he, he didn't touch that ball, the ball would be going uh, centrally to to Gil. But anyway, this thing in football uh, that happens. So you know. We stay positive with those things. We have to continue, and that's all. So we wanted to avoid uh, worst injury with the uh, with the young Bijoy, and we wanted fresh legs on the, on the pitch. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are right. And uh, yeah, and uh, when Albino got injured, we signed a replacement. Uh, but when Jessel Rahul got injured, there were no re replacement at all. So uh, in general, you think we didn't use the January transfer window wisely, or is it like? Uh, we had some targets, but dur during the time, but we just couldn't reach to an agreement. We had some targets, but uh, even players uh, that we wanted in that moment, they were not comfortable with uh, with coming to uh, to our team. Seeing that in that period we had like twenty five and plus positive cases, and it was not it was not easy to invite and say to someone, you know what, come and sign with us. But, you know, we have 25 and more cases, positive. So if you come and sign with us, go in the quarantine 15 days. And then if you did never had COVID, so probably most, most probably you will get it. So <laughs> it was hard them because many of them and the most, most of the teams were in isolation, current in those moments. And then um, uh, we had some targets and uh, some of those players, maybe they choose to stay in their teams. And uh, then we just decided, you know, we are in a full uh, 
pandemic period now again with uh, many cases so let's just go through it and we'll see for the next period so it was not easy it was not easy to convince people it was not easy to to invite someone just like you know the circumstances were weird you know and i understand those players saying that they were they were afraid and saying you know what i i'm afraid that i don't want to risk that so we understood those moments so that was it yeah uh, thank you coach uh, hi Sanjay, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, so we all are waiting for your very first goal for KBFC. So when will that happen? Even like, even I'm waiting, even I'm waiting for like... Uh, oh, yeah, go! Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I was... Yeah, can we expect that tomorrow itself? <laughs> yeah, yeah you, can, you can expect like anytime, like whenever like I get into the pitch. Because like uh -huh. my, uh, being, a, being a striker is always uh, to score a goal. So like in every in to get a goal for the team, you can mm -hmm. expect any time. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, thank you, thank you so much for both of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Basil. Can I have Arun's question, please? Yeah, thank you, Rose. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, how are you doing? Everything all right, Aaron. Yeah, thank you. Uh, coach, uh, uh, my question is uh, in the last game, uh, of course, you're winning clearly, and uh, they were down to 10 men. Uh, but uh, during those last few moments, you no, know, of course, there was a, la a lengthy added time given at the end of the match, seven minutes qu is quite lengthy. And when your team, uh, when they were on the offensive naturally, uh, your team got a lot of uh, counter attacks and you know, fast breaks. And what we saw was uh, your team were trying to score from those opportunities. In hindsight, do you think maybe a bit of time wasting would have helped a lot? You know, someone trying to find, like Prashant, someone trying to find Jorge in between. Uh, instead of that, maybe he could have hugged the, uh, uh, the site. Your players would do a little uh, by being a, uh, be a little more, be a more pragmatic rather than just <laughs> in such situations, you know, just to do a little more time wasting, do you think uh, that would have been a little more, uh, better option? Yeah, so now from, going this, uh, from this point, from this point, yeah, maybe. But you know, when you are a competitor, when you want to compete and you want to score goals, especially when you are a young player, you know, as uh, some of our players, you want to go and score goals. And I think that we had a couple of very good chances at the end that we could have scored more goals. And it, it could have been uh, easy, 3-1 or 4-1, easy. And then in the last moments, you know, with the, uh, it, it's within the second when the player who gets the ball has to decide what he will uh, do with the, with the ball. So then making a pass or shooting or going, like you said, going in the corner, wasting time, taking like, these are the decisions that the players have to make. So actually one game where there are also fans and you can shout, you can call, nobody can hear you. So this is about players' lucidity and players' quality, what they will decide and uh, what they will do with the ball. Again, I was mentioning in the previous, I think, uh, press conferences and interviews that me as a coach, I will never dare, I would never dare to tell the player what to do with the ball the moment he has the ball on the pitch because it's a, it's a matter of seconds, you know, what the lucidity and uh, the quality they possess will allow them to do on the pitch. So these kind of things they have to decide themselves in those moments, especially when we are close to, uh, to an end or in these uh, chances where, you know, you have to show that quality and score goals. I'm very sorry, for example, for that last uh, post of uh, young Barreto when he, uh, when he shot on, uh, on the post. So actually, if he had scored uh, today, we would have a completely different topic. But anyway, that's football. So, you know, when you have those chances, you don't, let's say, make them gold for you and score goals, then on the other side, it could be a, it could be opposite, you know. And after red card, they get in the 93rd minute, you know, in last these moments. Even we have the chance after that, I think. Or, so these moments you have to use, you know, you have to use with quality, but when you are at the end of your uh, force, freshness and everything, so these things happen. So with all these things, we just have to continue. And because now in the short term, the games are just coming on. So we don't have time to get more than needed about. So we just have to move on. And there are new games coming on. We have to play them. And that's it. 
All right, Coach, I just have one, one final question. Um, yes. it, it's stepping, stepping away, away from tomorrow's game, uh, it's, it's a general thing. Uh, you are, I know you are someone who is active on social media, but not on match days naturally. Uh, and of course, all, of you, all your players are on social media. They use Instagram, Twitter, everything. So uh, we, we see, what we see these days is, of course, because fans are not able to uh, be in the stadiums, they take to the social media platforms to express their opinions. You know, a lot of post-match debates, a lot of uh, interactions happen on social media, especially in Twitter, what we are seeing. So uh, in the, after the last match, there was a, a lot of things that happened. You know, Things got boiled, boiled over. Uh, one of your former players, a former club captain, got involved in the, into an issue. And uh, so uh, how, my question is, you know, how, how much uh, it's easy for players to get distracted by these kind of things? You know, they could, uh, uh, they could get upset by a comment made by a fan or from a former player for, uh, or, or an rival teammate. So uh, is there a, a general uh, policy that you have at the club? Like you say, tell your players, don't be on social media, or do you give them the freedom? Uh, how do you handle that situation? the social media thing, it could get to your head, right? So how do you handle this situation? Well, uh, we have to admit, we are on social lives today. They are uh, the part, uh, an inevitable part of our lives today. And many people today express themselves on social media. Uh, then, you know, all the players, you know, all the, all the people, you have a uh, freedom to use them, but there are also certain uh, limits and certain rules that how you can use them, why you have to use them, and uh, all these kind of things. Personally, I'm the guy who uh, who grew up uh, without internet. You know, I'm, you know, with the old fashioned old school guy. And with social media, they are uh, they can be a very useful tool today. Uh, many of, let's say, many people around the world. They use them, you know, some of mentioned uh, social media today, you know, you can watch them as a big toilet wall or where everybody can write anything uh, uh, he wants or use them for certain things. But, you know, that's a tool. That's a tool today. And then some players speaking about, you know, playing games during the games, after the games, you know, there are emotions, there are uh, reactions, there are things that some of the players might say or might not say, and then it goes viral, it goes just uh, online, and then it provokes and it creates uh, positive or negative things around, around the image of a certain person. So then, as a grown-up person, you have to know to use them correctly, you have to know to use them uh, with a reason. You know, if you announce certain things that you have to announce with a reason, if you are about to post something that you are about to post with a reason, so, of course, we will never ban or we will never tell our players or anyone in our club uh, not to use them. But, you know, they, they, as a grown-up person, they have to be responsible. When they use them, when they say certain things, when they post certain things, they must know that there are, uh, you know, responsibilities, circumstances, and maybe some reactions that it can provoke or not provoke later on. So, uh, today, as a, personally, I look at social media again as a tool that you can uh, read certain things, that you can see certain things, that you can express yourself in a way that, okay, to share your opinion, but the, there are many good parts of it. There are many bad parts where anyone can express himself today sharing an opinion and having the same right to share an opinion like a Nobel Prize winner, which is not normal. So then today you can read so many stupid things for some people and, you know, it affects many people around, but I don't look at those things personally because if I want to get affected or influenced personally, so I have to know that person uh, personally. But anyway, you know, everybody can use it. You just have to be, let's say, intelligent enough and clever enough to, to know to use them the way you want to use them to share things, to share uh, positive energy, positive vibe, and uh, that's all. So that's how I look at it. So everybody has to use it in a positive way, in a correct way, to, to make everything around us better. That's, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you. And Rose, uh, if I may have one final question, is it okay? Yeah, that's fine, Arun. 
Thank you, uh, Coach. Um, I'll just uh, go and finish with one one final question. Just added some, uh, just adding on to this what you just said. Uh, I would like to have know your opinion on women's football, uh, uh, the pro, the development of women's football. You know, it's, I know it's not complete, not related to your club or the league in general. But uh, just just uh, because you come from a different culture, quite un, uh, quite different from ours but how it's over there because uh, over here you know it's this is in, in normal parlance you know people who don't follow uh, the game much you know they see it you know there's a crude way of looking at game you know they say like it's uh, they, they talk about uh, how uh, football is being a masculine sport how football is uh, football or anything to do with uh, uh, aggression or pace or uh, you know a lot of skill involved they call it as a masculine sport you know they kind of uh, look down upon women taking the sport, which is a very crude thing in any culture. But uh, we see a lot of that in Indian culture, not now among youngsters, but mostly in uh, the older generation. So I would, I'm just curious to know about what, how uh, your culture, your countrymen, your people, they look at women's sport in general and women's football in general. And what's your opinion on it, if, if, if it's okay to answer? Of Thank course. You. Well, I think that uh, the the world is the world is based on it to make this uh, environment and the world better every day. The world is something and that stays to younger generations, and then the older generation they have to build up the environment around around the world for a younger generation to have better conditions of everything, every possible aspect that maybe older generations had in uh, in the past. So speaking about. Uh, women's sport, I think that especially women's football is one of the best things uh, uh, that happened in a, in a football because development of uh, certain culture worldwide uh, gives possibility for, uh, you know, equal rights. And actually in many countries and also in my country and where I live in Belgium, the, the football, women's football is very, uh, very developed. The league, the national teams and... Uh, of course, when you see uh, that level improving day by day and uh, federations and clubs investing in uh, also women's football, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. I'm a big supporter of that. Actually, in my, one of my previous clubs that I coached in Belgium, uh, that club has really, really good uh, women's team. Women's team playing on a level of Champions League. And personally, I was going to watch those games like, like uh, against Manchester City or some German clubs. And it was pleasure. It was a pleasure to watch those games as national teams. And I think that women's football has to be developed in all parts of the world, of course, depending on culture, depending on uh, whatever opinion is. But I think that that's one of the most beautiful things uh, that happened around the world because everybody must have a right to play sport. Everybody must, must have a right to especially play football because it's a nice game. It's a worldwide game and anybody can participate. From youngers, youngsters, still olders, uh, men, women, so everybody. I'm a big supporter of it. Oh, thank you, Coach. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you, Arun. Thank you, Arun. Can we have the last question from Shayantan, please? Yeah. Hello, Coach. This is Shayantan from Sports Kira. I don't hey. know if that this has been this chat from sports, uh, but uh, Jorge Pereira Diaz uh, was red carded in the last game, so he will be suspended for the next game. Now, how does that influence your attacking changes for the upcoming match? Well, it's a one player with that we are missing, and now we have enough players who can uh, play, so no problem, no problem. So the players who are getting playing time now, and uh, you know chance to uh, to score goals to uh, to participate it's a nice thing you know for them it's it's an excellent thing to uh, to show themselves so that's all in the football squad when you have 20 25 players that's how it goes you have players who are you know starting 11 and then the process but i'm, I'm very sorry that on a short term competition like i sell is on on a three three and a half months that we don't have a longer period but all the players can get uh playing time, many games that they can participate, play, because it's it's different. It's different in, in ISL, and I'm very sorry that sometimes some players who deserve even more to, more to play 
they don't get those chances, especially with the foreign rules. Or, uh, but like we said, whoever is suspended, whoever is injured, we'll continue with other players that we have, and that's that's it. Uh, coach, I had another last question that you know this year we have seen through across teams that there is a sense of family more so than ever. You know, everyone feels very connected to their teams, and every player feels very connected. So, is this something that the coaches have been trying, especially so during the COVID times? given how the situation is with the bio bubble and everything i think it is something that uh, just uh, reflected automatically seeing that we are now second year in a row in the bubble and uh, which is weird which is hard which is difficult i think that that's why you see more and more frustration all around isl because everybody are uh, everybody is on uh, on its limits and uh, you know, it's a, it's not a nice feeling being in a bubble, living in a bubble. And when you are all the time together for months, then you create kind of family environment. And then uh, mutual respect, you know, among each other, uh, being together every day, eating together, training together. So these kind of things create those environments. And then as a team, when you pick up and when you have correct characters and mentality with your, within your team, it just creates, uh, creates automatically. And of course, as a coaching staff, you want to have that kind of environment because this is the, the energy you need to build those results. Thank you, Coach, and all the very best for the next game. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess uh, we can wrap today's PC. So thank you, Coach, and thank you, Chencho, for joining. Thank you all. Good luck for tomorrow's match. Thank you, Rose. Bye-bye.